So what made people believe that a groundhog controls the weather? I don't think I have to be the first to tell you that this quirky tradition started quite a long time ago and is rooted in some folkloric backstory. I mean, let's be honest, we gather by the thousands in the cold in the middle of Pennsylvania to see a glorified rodent come out of the ground just to scurry back in his hole. Is there a lot of scientific truth or logic to this process? Spoiler alert, not so much. If February isn't your month and all this gushy lovey junk makes you want to crawl in a hole, I actually may have the perfect valentine for you. So his name is Phil, he's from Pennsylvania, my home state represent. He stands at about 20 inches tall, and I know that may be too short for you, but girl, you can't be picky, it's cuffing season. Oh, brunette and a definite homebody, except you know on those random days when he decides to leave the house. But this guy is kind of scared of his own shadow, so that doesn't happen often. Oh, and he's basically a meteorologist. So, what do you think? Okay, so I'm not setting you up with a short brunette man who's basically a hermit. I'm talking about February's true star of the show, Punxsutawney Phil. Basically, this famous groundhog is responsible for telling the world whether or not we will endure six more weeks of winter or if we're in for an early spring. This guy crawls out of his hole and onto quite an elaborate stage to greet thousands of loving fans with his predictions about the season to come. If he sees his shadow up on that stage, that essentially means we shouldn't put away our mittens quite yet. Winter is sticking around a bit longer. If he doesn't see his shadow, spring is well on its way. The celebration of Groundhog Day as we know it actually began over 130 years ago. But before we gathered from near and far to see a rodent pop out of the ground, February 2nd was known as Candlemas, an ancient Christian tradition in which the clergy would bless and distribute candles needed for winter. The candles represented how long and cold the winter ahead was going to be. Over time, Candlemas evolved into another form, a means of predicting the season's weather ahead. But still, no involvement of Phil or any of his woodland creatures. It wasn't until this tradition made its way to Germany that an animal was introduced to the forecast mix. Forget candles, we wanted hedgehogs. According to German lore, if the hedgehog saw his shadow on Candlemas Day, there would be a second winter, or six more weeks of bad weather. And as these German settlers made their way to the US, their hedgehog meteorologist traditions came with them. However, it's not often you see an abundance of hedgehogs burrowing and hibernating in the United States, so a similar animal was chosen to continue the tradition, and you guessed it, a groundhog. Now hosted in Punxsutawney, Pennsylvania, Groundhog Day has been held every year since 1886 at the Gobbler's Knob Grounds. Our official source, Groundhog.org, tells us that it's, quote, a day to take everything a little less seriously and break up the winter monotony, at least for a little while. I feel kinda bad. I've been bashing my man Phil, saying that his once a year appearance doesn't mean much and it's all just fun and games. So I'm gonna call in one of the experts to tell us about the legitimacy of what Phil has done over the past 133 years. No one knows this guy and his tactics better than the Punxsutawney Groundhog Club. Hey Steph, I'm Jeff Lundy. I'm president of the Punxsutawney Groundhog Club, member of the Inner Circle. Uh, I'm one of Phil's friends and my moniker in the club is Fairweather Man. So I just have a couple of questions about our okay. friend Phil and about the holiday and everything like that. So first and foremost, how long ago did this wildlife forecast begin in Punxsutawney? Well, the actual time for the forecast of the Groundhog Club knowing it goes back to, I think it's 1887, which is like, like it's around 135 years. That's when Phil came out of the woods. Now he may have been predicting you know, before that, I mean, maybe just for some local farmers or, you know, whoever was hanging out at that, that time. Um, but he's been forecasting for us uh, since then. Will you just tell me a little bit about what you do and what your role is in the day? I've I'm a been, a, been a member of the, what we call the inner circle, which is you can picture it kind of like the board of directors of, of our organization. Uh, we're the people that take care of Phil. Um, we all have little roles. We all do different things. The most important role is not mine. It's the handler who has the relationship with Phil. Right now I'm president. Um, I apparently did, did not attend one of the meetings and then came to the next meeting and I was president. <laughs> That's kind of how things work in organizations. And I had to learn groundhog ease. I had to learn how to speak to Phil because only the president can with this cane. Um, and it's very hard. 
Okay, so one thing I kind of want to hear a little bit more about that you've already touched on, this was not in my anticipated questions because this is brand new information. What do you mean by groundhog whispering? What are these signals that you're going to be looking well, at? Well, it's called groundhog ease. So oh, sorry, Phil yeah. does not speak. So if you look at any of our literature or you look at any of our things, you're not going to see a bubble with, with Phil on it because he doesn't speak, you know, um, uh, in our language. He understands it, uh, but he doesn't speak it because, you know, it's his own language. His language is groundhog ease. So the tradition is that whoever's the president is the only one who can speak to Phil. And I have this cane that we keep locked up. And it's when I hold this cane, I'm in theory uh, is able to communicate with Phil. You know, it's kind of like a wink and a nod and you kind of got to know, you know, and, and his paws, you know, he's he's got these little hands that don't have thumbs. You know, that's why you can't thumb. Like you'll never see a groundhog on the side of the road. That's old for you, I know, but for, me, for thumbing, <laughs> you know, like when you used to, yeah. have to go to college, you would thumb, you can't do it because it doesn't have thumbs. It doesn't have opposing thumbs. Um, so like the little hand signals, those work too. Sometimes he'll do that. Like if he's counting, I, I think he does that. But, so that's groundhog ease. I love that. I had And no I can't idea. really tell everybody about it either because, you know, that would be violate the whole. Right. <laughs> kicked out as president. Yeah. I don't blame you. That's some secret yeah, stuff. It's pretty responsible. <laughs> yeah, it's... So I know you kind of talked about this a little bit, but what is the largest crowd you've ever seen on Groundhog Day at the celebration? Was it last year? Yeah, it, I think it really was. It, it becomes a point where the crowd is so large that you, you actually can't see the end of it. I mean, you literally can't, <clears throat> from the knob, you can't see you know how many are there. Um, but I would say it was the largest crowd. The, the second largest was was about two years after the movie, I think. Um, and just so you're aware too, on Groundhog Day, um, people, if you go to our website, I mean, it, it starts as a stage production like at four in the morning. Yeah. And it lasts for like three hours of dancing and music and huge fireworks. And so, you know, that part is what we'll miss more than anything this year. It's the interaction with people. And um, so we're trying to do everything we can to kind of maintain that contact that we have. Right. That's so awesome. Um, I don't know if you can disclose this information, but how old is Phil? Well, we, we know he's 135. Okay. Okay. Um, because that's when he came out of the woods. So mm -hmm. I, but you know, past that, I, I don't know. Okay. Good to know. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's just, you know, I, I don't know. We, we just say you know, he's, he's around that age. Awesome. Alrighty. Thank Thanks, you Steph. so much, Jeff. Nice yeah. Nice. Uh, nice meeting you. Maybe our yeah. paths will, cross again. I hope right. so. Thanks. Hi, thank you. Okay, so now we know all about Phil and his forecaster abilities. But is he the only groundhog with this type of clout? I will be the first to admit, I thought every state had their own groundhog to watch, celebrate, and count on for Groundhog Day Stratos traditions. Sharing this information was slightly embarrassing, but can you blame me? I grew up in Pennsylvania with Punxsutawney Phil in my backyard. I never had to worry about another state's groundhog. But the joke's on everyone else, because other states have in fact picked up on this tradition with their own furry friends in the ground. For example, have you met Sir Walter Wally of Raleigh, North Carolina, or Birmingham Bill, Birmingham, Alabama, Buckeye Chuck of Marion, Ohio, French Creek Freddy, French Creek, West Virginia, Woodstock Willie of Woodstock, Illinois, Chesapeake Chuck of Newport News, Virginia, Chuckles from Manchester, Connecticut, Chattanooga Chuck from Chattanooga, Tennessee, and lastly, the most unique name, Jimmy, just Jimmy, of Sun Prairie, Wisconsin. It may sound silly to rely on a shadow and or a groundhog to tell us what's in store for the rest of the season. And to be fair, the whole shadow thing is just a fun tradition and a show at this point. But that doesn't mean that animals don't have the ability to sense other types of weather patterns. Take frogs, for example. These amphibians are said to croak longer and louder than usual when bad weather is on the horizon. When a frog's croak volume increases, a storm is brewing. Farmers also believe that cows have some kind of weather sense as well. According to legend, when cows sense bad weather, they actually become restless and swat flies with their tails, or they lie down in the pasture to save a dry spot. So perhaps my friend Phil is onto something. What have we learned? Basically, we wait for a 134-year-old rodent to pop out of the ground on February 2nd, 
all because of the Germans who just had to change ancient tradition. And as much as I love Phil and I wish that his shadow had some pull when it comes to packing up my parka, there isn't much accuracy or evidence to support his forecasts. So my friends, that's the scoop on this holiday. Be sure to come back next Friday for another episode of Cool Stuff Strange Things, where we'll fall down more groundhog holes of downright strange stories.